Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be rebuilding this Rotax 947, 951, depending on what you read. Uh, the best thing to start is to make sure you have your manual and make sure you know the torque values, what it calls for, and make sure you're not forgetting anything like that. Um, then you want to go ahead and have your stuff set out like this. I've got all my stuff laid out, already have all the bolts ready to go, have our Loctite, we have our tools, have our torque wrench. Uh, have some chem tool for cleaning the case before uh, we start putting the engine together. The first thing to do when you're rebuilding your Rotax is to get the crank put into the upper case. Um, I've already gone ahead and done this here just because it's kind of hard to do on camera and it's a little bit finicky. But what you want to make sure to note is to make sure that you get the um, big washers or the thrust washers lined up so you, and be very careful not to bend them. Um, also, you want to make sure you got all of your seals lined up and make sure they're all in there straight. There's also some locating pins right here and right here. Then also, we turn the engine. You can see them on the other side as well, down here, and then again on the other end. The first step of getting this back together is we need to get the balance shaft put into the case. Um, on the according to the manual, on this center gear here on the engine there will be a place with a blue stripe. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but if you look right there, you can see the stripe. So we want to get that stripe lined up down here with the bottom. Then when we go to install the counterbalance, there's the same stripe also. We can see the stripe right here on this. Also another important thing to note on this piece is there's a little oiling hole. You can see it right here. Um, this hole needs to be up when the shaft is installed into the case. When you're installing these uh, shafts into the engine, be careful not to nick the bearings or anything like that. We can see those two marks as they come together, the two blue marks right there on the two gears, so we know the counterbalance is in sync with the crank. So once we have the shaft in, we want to make sure that everything rotates smoothly. Make sure all the bearings and the seals are seated well. And make sure both of your pins are in, which they are here. Everything's turning smoothly. Another thing you need to do before you put the engine back together in general is you want to lubricate some things. I just used this little veterinarian syringe and some regular two-stroke oil in a mixing cup. And I go in and lubricate all the main bearings, the gear shaft right here, that small bearing, the big ends on that, just everything in there to make sure it's going to be good, even if it sits for a little while. Um, the next thing that we need to do before getting ready to put the two case halves together is we need to make sure this seal and lip all around, all the way around it is totally clean. And it's done. So for now we're going to take this and set it aside. The next thing we need to do is get our lower case ready. Um, to be mated to the upper case. Um, just like the upper case, we want to clean all the surfaces and make sure there's no oil residue on the um, mating surfaces where we're going to be putting the case sealant. Also in this case, since I was too lazy to take the um, starter ring or flywheel off of the uh, crank, I need to make sure that I go ahead and put this starter uh, bend -in and gear reduction into the case. So now we're going to use some case sealant. Uh, this time I happen to have some Yama Bond, but it's all basically the same thing. Uh, I haven't cut this one yet, but I want to make the opening small as possible. So now we're going to go ahead and cut it. Now for the fun part. Um, when you're putting case sealant on cases, they're really tight tolerances, so there's no need to put a lot on it. I mean, really, it just takes a little bit. Also, you want to be really careful when you're near any kind of uh, bearings. Also, uh, near your holes and pretty much anything like gears, especially in this engine where it has a lot of stuff in this area right here. 
Um, so you just want to put a little bit, and I'm probably going to use my finger just to make it a thin layer across everything. Okay, so now we're going to spread this out in a nice, thin, even layer. There's always going to be some extra, so it's best to have some kind of junk towel to wipe your finger off. All right, now we gotta join the two case halves together. Once we put these uh, little Rotax end caps on that go um, on the ends of the counterbalance, uh, I went ahead and put a little oil on the O-rings here that are placed already. Uh, so they're ready to go. Okay, you also wanna check your seals in the balance shaft. They can move around a little bit also. So now we're gonna put the bottom half of the case on. It should more or less just go right on like that. All right, now it's time to uh, put the bolts in and torque them. Um, Rotex calls the use of thread locker on all of the bolts, so we'll go ahead and put that on there now. Okay, so first we're gonna just run all these down by hand. We don't wanna cross thread them or strip them or anything like that. Okay, now that we have those down, it's time to actually torque the bolts. Okay, the first thing we have to do is torque crankcase screws to 106 inch pounds as per the following sequence. Repeat, retightening all screws to 20 foot pounds. So, Looks like number one is on the side of the starter bump, so that's where we'll start. And that should be the last one in the first sequence. I'll make sure the crank still spins freely. If it does, that's good. Um, of course, after our first torque sequence, the next one's going to be at 20 foot pounds. And we're going to repeat the same sequence again, starting with number one here on the main crank.
have another round on the small ones. This will be the last round for the smaller bolts, then there'll be one more for the larger ones. Oh, fuck. Then, we have a final torque of the larger bolts at 30 foot-pounds. Case halves are together, the crank still spins freely. So I'm gonna flip the case over. The last step of uh, the Rotax manual calls for adding 10 milliliters of oil. Oop, actually 30 weight oil. So we'll go with some of this uh, 10 weight Miller Oils Nano Drive Racing Engine Oil. Sure it'll do just fine. into this inspection plug there. It's good to go. Fortunately I didn't read what that's torqued down to so we'll just give it the old tight. All right. 